All right, guys, welcome back to the class two summary class. And we are trying to um, understand what is Java class, different type of class members, class instance, how to make objects, what are methods, uh, what is the scope, and uh, also getting started with Selenium, understanding the architecture, what is a jar, uh, and configuring and installing Selenium. That is what probably we will be covering uh, in today's class. So um, before I move on to the class understanding, I would like to know from you, um, anyone, uh, what you think class is. What is a, basically a class? Why do I need a class? Um, and if I want you to create a class, if I want you to, if I want, if I want, if I'm giving you a particular situation, um, for example, uh, there are, there is a school and in a school, there are multiple classes, like class one, two, three, four. And also in each and every classes, there are, multiple students, right? Um, if I am trying to give you a situation like this, where I have a school, inside school there are multiple classes, and each and every classes there are, say, 20 students. And if I am trying to give you this logic, um, and if I'm convert, if I'm asking you to convert this logic into a class, um, I mean, if I want you to describe me the situation in terms of Java class, then what would be your approach? So, question number one: uh, What is class? What is this class? All right. And second question, the situation that I am trying to um, get from, understand from you guys is basically to give me a perspective of a Java class from the situation where I have a school. In a school, I have multiple classes, class one, class one, class two, and each and every class is having say 20 students. So basically class two, and then each and every class is having like students, students, right? Students, student one, student two, so on and so forth. And there are 20 students in each class. If I'm asking you to, um, explain me the situation from a Java class perspective, what would be your approach? So let's let's try with the first question. What is a, what is a class? Let, let me go with uh, Rita. Rita, what do you think? What is a class? A class, from my understanding, is basically a blueprint for creating an object. So for instance, um, if you want to create a school, you'd have to think, what do you have in a school? So like students, teachers, um, I, subjects, I guess, something like that. Um, so every time you create a school, you know um, the variables that um, will be needed. That's my understanding. Okay. Um, you are quite right with that. Let me go with uh, uh, Ben. Ben, do you want to add anything to it? Yeah, so... Um... <clears throat> Yeah, so as Rita said, um, class is pretty much a template um, that you would use um, across the board. So, you know, I will create a template and it will have some instant variables inside the properties inside that uh, global scope. And then uh, from there, I'll be able to create um, new instances um, um, using um, the uh, uh, <coughs> new instance uh, uh syntax like code um <clears throat> and from there i'll be able to kind of like create different um 
unique classes so it will have the same sort of uh, properties but it will each each instance will be unique okay okay yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're pretty good with that all right anybody nikki what do you think um i think they've covered everything i guess the benefit of it is that it makes code more uh, maintainable maybe and uh reusable uh -huh. Uh -huh. yeah yeah so I think you guys have covered most of it and it's, it's very well covered. Uh, let me try to um, give you guys an understanding. What is a class? I'll exactly say the same thing, but uh, let me try from this uh, diagram. So in this situation, you can see, uh, I'm saying class is a template from which you can create individual objects. So basically you know that probably in the in this particular slide deck i have discussed that there are two different memory space in 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 java virtual machine one is a heap memory and another one sorry stack memory another one is a heap memory and i told you that if if i am creating a class called as a car if i'm creating a class called as a car and i'm giving some attributes uh, to that car. For example, the car will have a brand, uh, the car will have a model, so on and so forth. So this is going to be acting as a template for my uh, program, right? This is going to work as a template, right? You, you know, there's a car class and I have a template created just like that. And now, and the same template can also have multiple different properties, like a car can start, a car can stop, a car can speed up, so on and so forth. And then if I'm asking you to use this car template and basically convert this into something that will have the data, you see, when you're creating a template, the template doesn't contain a data, all right? Uh, but in this case, or, 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 or limited, I mean, the template can contain a limited data, right? However, if I'm actually trying to create a, uh, you know, actual active instance of this car template and process some valid information, that's where I go and I work with creating an object of the class. So in this case, I will be creating an object of the class using car, and I can give the name called Mercedes equals new car. And when I say that, I am immediately creating a memory block in my heap memory, just like that. And the name of that memory block will be obviously Merc, because that's the name of the object that you have. And this space is now reserved for that object. And whatever that, that small object is having, I mean, all the data and all the information, whatever you have, it is pretty much confined within this memory space, okay? Nobody else is accessing that information. You can create an Audi, you can create a, you know, Mazda or whatever, but always they will be having their own space and nobody is talking to each other. They have their own zone, all right? That's pretty much that you need to understand in terms of car, okay? I mean, instead of class, all right? Um, with this approach, obviously, you have um, a huge benefit. That is, you can use the same template and all your objects will be always getting anything that has been updated in the template. So Nikki exactly said very well that, you know, um, it will make it maintainable. That means tomorrow, if I am giving a car, the SCAR brand, the SCAR uh, template, a special object or special property that the car can fly, right? The car can fly. This property will be then available for all the objects as well. So obviously you understand that you are creating one template and that is being used by multiple, that, that is basically, uh, yeah, it's being not used, 
you can say it's used here. Yeah. That's being used by multiple objects, right? That is basically the class in Java is all about, all right? Now let's try and understand if I am giving you this situation to tackle where I'm asking you to create a school and create multiple classes and then each and every class will have multiple students, right? If I'm, if I'm giving you an option that, okay, create a school that will have five classes, five classes, each class will have around 10 students. And if I'm asking you to create the situation, all right, how do you think you can approach this? Um, who will tell me? Uh, Vaishali, what do you think we can do here? I am, so you create a class first with the, sorry, can you please repeat the question again? Yeah. So I'm trying to create, I'm trying to basically get a Java perspective of the situation. I have a school. Okay. In a school, I have five classes and each class is having 10 students. If I want to create this situation, how can I do it? So I think um, you've done one of the exercises. Um, so first you create a class without the main, uh, uh, you know, the void thing method, without the main method with the students in it and then you create a method and you call in the students in there is that correct mm, no not exactly i need a better answer than this uh Fola, do you want to try um okay so <clears throat> i think the school will be the java project and then the class one and class two will be the um the packages then student one and student two will be the class files within each package no 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 somebody Can else I... please yeah then go on yeah so pretty much <laughs> what you do first is you create a class um, let's say you create a package and that package uh, would not have any main method and in that class you would pr pretty much state in the global scope your um, instant variable so your properties so for each for, for, for the global scope you might just um, uh, define the variables as student name student subject um uh, just the, the properties that you know are generic to each class to each class um, yeah, I, I, I'm exactly so don't 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 sidetrack I'm mm -hmm. not involving any subject here. I have mm -hmm. a simple question. I want exactly this situation to be done using Java class meaning I should have a school, in the school, I should have five classes, and each class must have 10 students. Okay, so you just pretty much, um, you'd, you would, it, so the class for the school, it, it, each class, you have class one in the global scope, you have class one, um, class two, class three, class four, and class five. What, 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 what is class one, class two like? What are they? Um, class one is the um, uh, instant instant variable. Instant variable of what? Instant variable of a string. Oh my god! No. no. Uh, the, uh, would would the school be the uh, the package where class one to five would be the class files? Then within each class, you would have the string of each student. Mm -hmm. Guys, um, no, you guys are totally going in a different direction. What about Ronan? Ronan, what do you think? Um, I've gone think along the lines of what the previous person says. Um, 
you make a Java class for each class and state a variable of string student. No, no, no. That's wrong. No. no, no, no. So guys, whenever you have a problem like this, you have to think from a higher level. In this problem that I'm describing, you have to first and foremost figure out what are my entities in this whole story? Who are my player? I have three players in this whole story. Number one is a school. Number two is a class. Class one, class two, I don't know, but it's a class, all right? And number three is a student. These three guys are my primary entities. If I have three guys in my primary entities, that's where you should think your entire solution from. So it is for in an eagle, eagle view, I'm, tr I'm trying to show it to you. So now let me show you the solution. Solution is very, very simple, all right? Okay, let's go and prepare this. This is the reason why life summary classes are so, so important. Um, I'm creating a new project. So Java class two. All right. Don't create. All right. In this, I'm going to create a package. The package name is test school test school test school. That's it. All right. That's it. In this whole game, who are my entities? Who are my major three player? A school, a class, and a student, all right? Let's create a school. New class, name it as school, done, okay? Next class, new class. What's the name of this class? The name of the class is class, right? However, in Java, if I name a class as class, they, it will not be accepted, all right? Uh, so I may want to name it as C-L-A-C-L-A-Z-Z, -Z, or maybe class, okay? This is depicting a class. Finish, done, good. Next three, who is it? New class, it's called student. Student, all singular, right? Nothing plural here. So they are my player, okay, good. Now let's talk again. I'm going to show the diagram to you. This is what I we are trying to build. Just give me one minute. Let me clear the left hand side. All right. Okay, this is what I want to build. I want a school in which I may have multiple classes. Good. How can I have multiple classes? I can have multiple classes whenever I'm saying multiple classes. All right. I can have multiple classes if I am trying to use something that can hold multiple entities together. And what can hold multiple entities together? Arrays. Arrays can hold <coughs> multiple entities together. So it'll be something like this. I'm trying to create an array, an array, array of class, right? I'm trying to create an array of class where each and every index of this array will contain a class object. Array can create array can have array can be created for anything. It could be it can be created for a string, an integer, anything. I told you the school is having maximum five classes. Maximum five classes. All right. You have to think, 
how can I create five classes and how can I add these classes into the school, right? Into the school entity. So school is an entity. At this stage, school is empty, student is empty, classes are empty, right? Let's see what a school can have. Let me create a variable, private, private string name. The name of the school is something I have not yet decided. Obviously, I'm not going to uh, define the name of the school here because I'm going to use the school object to name my school. It is a template, guys. It's just a template. All right, good. So string name, um, you can just give this as a null right now. Uh, no values given to it. And then I'm going to create another guy, which is going to be a private. I'll tell you why I'm doing a private. Private, I'm trying to create an array of classes because I want to hold, because a school will have multiple class, right? So I can create an array of classes. How is it? You may say class array class list class equals new. All right, new um, class. And I told you that I can have this, these kind of schools can have at the max five classes. This two properties or sorry, attributes are defined globally. Now at this stage, this template is just, a, it's a template. It has obviously no data. It's just a template, right? From these two variables, what is coming into your mind? You should be, we should have some property. These two are attributes, right? These two are attributes. I should have some property to the school class that can let me push some data inside these variables, this one and this one, right? Right now, these guys are empty. I mean, empty meaning it has no value at all. It's just a declaration. It's just a declaration at the very initial stage. Let me let me let me show you something. Let me show you something. I'm creating a new class again. I'm going to name this class as test school. Or just saying school project. School project. Something like that, right? Good. The school project is going to have a main method because from here. My actual project can be built. First thing, in the school project, I have to build a school. So I may say school, school, and name of this object of the school is maybe send marks, send marks. That's the school where my son is going. So that's the school that is coming in my mind. Send marks, all right? New school. Okay. That's the first object of the school I created. This object right now has nothing to do. If I do a dot, I don't see anything because this send marks is not accessing any property of the school because there is no property of the school. I have defined, meaning the school class must have some property that can let me, that can let me store the value of a name and somehow can also help me add the 
information or add a new class into this array, right? How can I do that? Number one, I'm creating a method now because this school has nothing to do right now. So I'm giving it an action, public, public void um, set name string name. All right. Um, or let, let me give straight uh, string school name school name, and then here you say name equals school name. Okay, I'm going to call this method in order to provide some information in the name, in the name variable. So if I'm, if I'm setting this information, I must be also getting the information. I must be getting the information. How can I get the information? I can create a method called public string get uh, like set school name, that, that'll be better. Set school name and get school name. Guys, you see, I'm always using a proper camel casing. Camel casing meaning, you see, the first word is in lowercase and then the next word starts with uppercase and the next word starts with uppercase. That's the naming convention we all use as a programmer. So please follow this. Get get started. I mean, make it a habit uh, so that you know you can follow that always, always. Camel casing. So get school name, right? Get school name. What it will do? It will simply return back the school name. Return. Return. Uh, name. That's it. So this property is letting me set the value and get the value of the school. Good. Next thing is my class. So a school can have multiple classes added to it, right? Multiple classes added to it. So this method is going to be tricky. This method is going to be tricky. Why? Because somehow we have to figure out that I will not be adding anything beyond five. I'm not going to add, the school will not let me add anything beyond five classes, right? So let's try to see how can I create the method or the property of this, of this uh, class addition. This school should have a property to add the class into it. Only then the class will be added to the school, right? So I will say public, public void add class. Add class is a method. And the job of this class is to add a class inside this array, correct? What this will take? This will take the object of class. Why? Because my motive is to create an array of classes, right? So class, class, again, class, again, class, right? So and so forth, yeah? I'm trying to create an array of class. So basically I need to send each and every class object inside the add class method so that I can fill the data inside this array, All right? How do I do that? Let's see, I'm gonna say class, class CL, all right? You see, I am not only confined. You can pass on any kind of parameter to a method. It can be string, it can be integer, it can be a special class. So I'm creating, I'm, I'm, I'm sending a special class to it now, okay? 
I'm sending a special class to it now. All right. So add class is the method. That will Sodic, be Sodic, please. Um, um, I've lost you. Can you just repeat the add class again? Okay, sure. Um, at this stage, the school class has no information of the class, actual class information. The school class has no information of how many classes are there in the school. I have just declared an array saying that this school may have at the max five classes, at the max five classes. But actually, what class are those? I have no idea. Is this understandable? Yeah. Okay. So now I am creating a method called add class. And the job of this class, job of this method will be job of add class method is, is to fill up fill up the list class array, list class array with, with classes, with multiple classes. Is this making sense? Yeah, yes, it no? does. Okay. So, so is it just a class to create, or oh, sorry, a method, I should say, to just create as many classes as you like? So you just, that's the whole aim, right? Or is there anything else? No, I, I didn't get that. Can you, can you repeat one more time? What I, what I mean to say is like at line 16, where you've, you've created a specific method mm -hmm. to create a class. So I, I guess. No, 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 no. no. This isn't the, okay. I, no, no, no. I'm not creating add class method to create a class. I'm creating right. this method so that I can add a class inside an array of classes. I see. Okay, got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So let's see how do I do this. At this stage, there is no value inside this. So meaning I can't do something like this. Mm. List class dot list class is a um, is an array, right? And okay, list class is an array, and I can do something like this. Let me check. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll take a for loop int i equals zero, okay? Yeah, I can do this. I'll, I'll tell you what I'm doing, hold on. Um, all right, so what I'll do is int i equals zero, i less than, um, less than list class is the array dot length. So basically I'm looping around the, I'm looping around the, uh, array i plus plus within the loop what is my motive my motive is to find out if so for example think about it if this, this is an empty array at this stage it's an empty array one two three four five at this stage, it's an empty array. When this program starts, it's an empty array. Now, this loop that I have, so I am calling, suppose I'm calling the method called add class. When I'm calling the method called add class and I'm passing the class object, it will first do what? It will first see in this method, do I have any class 
object or not. Let, let, let me show you, let me show you what it, it does right now. Let me just take out the whole, I'm, I'm clearing the uh, whole thing. And let me, let me show you how, what, what, what does it do right now? I'll do a sysout, okay? And I will just say, list class, I've spoken about array last time, so it should be fine. So if I, if I just want to print this out, look, I'm printing this out. System out dot print list class of I. So every time the iterate, iterations will go through and it will simply tell me what is there in this list class actually. So let's try to run this and see how that goes, okay? School project, in the school project dot, all right? I'll do a set name, set name, set school name. So let's give the name send marks, all right? Something like this. And then I have the method sent marks dot, right, add class. So add class is a method that will accept a class object. It can also accept a null object, all right? Uh, let, let me keep it null right now. Let me keep it null right now. Null is nothing. I have not created a class object. So I'm just trying to understand how my loop will work with the null object. So let me put a breakpoint here in line number nine. And let me try to run this program, all right? So debug as Java application. I am stopping in line number nine. And let me take you to the next line there, all right? So I'm stepping into, I'm in this loop. See, I'm in this loop. The class object is null. It is null. You can see I'm hovering on top of the object. It is telling me it is null. Obviously I passed on null, right? Now my motive is to go through this list of, this list class array. This list class is the, array, array of classes, right? But actually it has, it is not holding any value. So let me see what, ex what exactly it is holding. So if I just go down and if I print, it prints null to me. Do you see that? If I am hovering on top of the list class, you see, it has created, look at this. Come on, man. Okay, look. It has created five boxes of nulls. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a class. This array is there to hold multiple classes, but right now there is nothing because I have not passed on any actual class into it. So my motive is this. My motive is to see that if any of the index is having the value called null, only then I pass on the value to it. I pass on the class to it. Simple. If I find a null, only then I pass on the value to it. Otherwise I won't. So meaning when I, so for example, if I, if I am from, from the school project, right? If I'm creating a class here, class, class, say, class one, class one equals new class. I can do that, no problem at all, right? Uh, sorry, it is uh, terminate, um, it is classes, right? I can do that, no problem at all. This is my class one object. And this class one object, I can send it here in that class, correct? I can do that because add class method is accepting a class object, you see that? Add class method, which is under a school class, at class method, which is under a school class, is accepting a class object. So I can definitely send this class object here, no problem at all. And when I do that, and if I run this now, again, and if I just go, go like this, and when I'm passing a class object, you see, earlier it was showing null, but now it is not showing null, it is showing a hash code. What is this? It's called a hash code. So when the Java is executing the program for each and every entity, it creates a random number, alphanumeric number, which is a hash code. Okay. So you, you stop the program, you run it again, the hash code will be different. So for this object, okay, the hash code is this, right? Now, 
this guy is not null. So my motive is, if I see that there is a null value anywhere, I want to simply replace this with the new hash code. Not the hash code, but the new, new object, correct? And then I want to fill up all these nulls, right? Until I hit the last one. Let's try to do it. Let's try to see it. Um, so what I would do is, uh, it can accept at the max five, not more than that. So what I'll do is I'll just use a simple if else. If, if list class of i equals null. Uh, let me see if I can have the equals method. Yeah, I have equals method. If I have the equals method called null, right? If it is null, then, only then I want to supply the object inside inside that array index. So list of i equal class cl. Look at this uh, simple stuff here. Now, now, now let, let me show you what I do, okay? Let me show what I do. So uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, there will be a problem. Okay, no, there won't be a problem. I'll do a break. As soon as I enter the value, I want to break. Okay, let, let, let me not do a break and let me show you what is the problem. And then I'll show you what will the break will make the difference. Uh, let's run this again. It's very interesting. All right. At this stage, understand, I have created a class object. All right. I have created a class object called class one. And this class one I'm sending inside the method called add class. Let's see how, how it handles. So I'm in the loop. The loop will anyway iterate from i zero to length minus one, okay? And I'm going inside it like this, all right? And then I say, if it is equals to null, only then add this value. So let me do that. Um, Invoked, it's null. Okay, not invoked, so it's really cool. Okay, 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 okay. I understand, I understand. Because it's null, so it is not going to let me use the equals method. That's all right, that's all right. Um, I will be using just equal to, okay? Like so. Let's try again. Okay, I'll go inside this, all right? Looping around. If it is null, then enter the value inside the index, array index, all right? Let's do it. Now look at the list class. Do you see? Do you see this? Test school class so and so forth is added in the first index, all right? If I don't break out of the loop right now, then the same class one will be added across all of them, something that I don't want. I want when I am using class two and I send the class two to add class, only then it will add the new class to it. Only then, otherwise it won't. So let's see if I keep on looping around, it again adds, you see? The same thing, the same thing got added twice. That's not my motive. So as soon as I add the first class, I want to break out of it. Break, simple. Let's see now what happens. So I am putting a 
breakpoint. Let's run. All right. Okay. All right. I'm here. I go check this. I got it. I added that. I broke. So at this stage, there is only one class added to it. Now, if I am again creating an object of class two, name called class two, and I can add it here. Okay. I can do that. No problem at all. So this is basically my school. My school is having just one characteristic, two characteristic. One is called school, get school name, set school name, and add class, okay? And at the same time, I can also do a get class, right? I, can, I have an add class, but I also want to probably, uh, you know, want to get the classes, right? Somebody should have a method called get classes. So let's see method called get class, which will just give me back whatever the classes are available right now, right? Actual classes. So public, public, and this is going to, this is going to return back uh, the array of classes. So class, array, get classes, correct? That's it. And this will just return back, return back, return back, all right? Return back what? The list class array. Okay, that's it. Now, at this stage, if I run the program, what will happen? It will actually not do anything. Why is that? Because, um, one minute, because the get class method, if I call it, it will just give me the list class array. Until, unless I loop around that array and print each and every value, it doesn't make sense. So let me try to do something. Let me try to go back to my school project and let me try to show you something. Let me try to show you that if I am creating sent marks dot get class, this method is going to return back a list class array. So if it is written back a list class array, then I can just create, I can say something like this, class array list class equals this, right? Um, let's see why you're having a problem. Mm, type this much. Get classes. Yeah, that's right. This method get classes will get me the list class, right? Because this method is returning back a class array. You can see that it is written back a class array. So if it is written back a class array, then I can just catch it here. Once I catch it here, I can loop around something like this for int i equals zero, all right? I less than uh, list class dot length i plus plus. I'm showing this to you so that you are super clear how to tackle a Java class problem, all right? And now I go and say sysout, sysout, list class i. Okay, so one more time, let's do a recap. What am I doing? I'm creating a class number one, okay? With the help of the class class in Java. This class is having no attribute, no property, nothing. It's a blank guy, it's okay, all right? But it's a class, right? Now I created a class of this class object and named it as class one. I created a class I created an object of school class and named it as sent marks, okay? And then sent marks, the school class is having few properties. Number one is set school, get school, add class and get classes, okay? So set school, it's quite understandable. This name will be added to the object sent marks. This name 
is going to be given is given to the send mark name property name attribute right so that 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 is, that is the first thing second thing the method is there is another method called add class add uh, class method so yeah. why is it that we don't get uh, get school name yet sorry get school no saint marks dot gets is we have set school name yeah yo I, I i didn't do it if you want to do it you can do it oh, okay okay i just it, it's, it's not a it's not a big big thing get school is just there so that you can print the value so if i if i do something like this is out sys out uh send marks dot get school name perfect you can do that no problem at all okay this will print out the school name that's it okay all right and then you have another method called add class i'm going to i'm going to make a comment out of it i'm saying adding class to the list classes array in school right this guy this method is adding a class to the list class array so i'm passing this class object to it it will add it once it is added with that for loop i told you i also want to get back this object okay so that i can understand what exactly it is holding if i print this out what do i print let's see that so at this stage i'm just adding only one class only one class so let's do that let's let's run this out it's done you see it printed this value it printed this value but for others it is null obviously because right now i have just added only class 1 i have not added anything else it it, it printed this value this guy is it actually doesn't have any any understandable value it is not it, it, it doesn't have any um you know uh, any any value that will make sense to us it is basically a a a a java object representation that you are you are seeing here you're trying to print out the object you're trying to print out the class object and it gave you this value it doesn't really have any special information if you, if you, if you understand correct and rest of them are having null okay now let's let's prepare our class template so class template is going to be a little bit similar to what school template is because class can have students so let's see this i'll go to class and i'm going to create two methods Pri not method sorry attributes private private string class name class name uh equals null and private so class can have hold students so i'll say students you see students student student array and name it as students student list equals new student new student and i'm going to i'm going to hard code this value to 10 i don't want to store more than 10 value 10 students something like this okay okay let's this is this, this is very very similar to what we did earlier so this guy that i have here let me create a getter setter for this a get value and a set value right so you can you can basically select this variable and you can go to edit and you can say sorry you can go to source and you can say generate getters and setters you see that option this is nothing but it's just going to create a simple method two methods one is a getter method and a setter setter method similar thing similar to whatever i did earlier so not for this only for this and say okay generate you see that you created this two methods for me not really a big deal correct so this is going to set the value and get the value that's all nothing fancy here let me create a method here called public 
void add student exactly how i did it with the school add student add student add student and here this method will be helping me to add a student inside the student list array so which means i should have a student um, class student student stu and then i say exactly the same logic i'll go to school i'll basically copy this and i'll put it here in the class as student all right so here it is going to replace by student list student list student list and this is two an array that is holding multiple students i'm adding them okay once Wait, I add them, so I just want to get something. Uh, mm -hmm. In the add student, the bracket and close, you write st. You can decide to write what you like. That's a parameter. Yes, yeah, you can. Okay. Yeah, All right. So I have this now. Okay. <clears throat> I should have also a method called get students, which will just send me the list of students. So public void public student list, uh, student array, student array, get students, students. All right. And uh, this will return the students. Let's do it. Good. That's all it has. That's all it has. Now, let me try to go back to the school project again and show you this. So at this stage, the class is what? A little bit prepared. Why? It has two methods. It has two attributes, a name and a student list. Correct? Can I, can I, can I make this class a little bit more functional? I mean, can I make this object a little bit more functional? Obviously, I can. I can just go and say class one dot set name. And the class name of this object is class one. Okay. What's the benefit? The benefit is this. <clears throat> I'm, I'm not I'm not I'm not putting any value here inside. I'm not putting any value here inside. Uh, I mean, I'm not putting any value for the student yet. And this, is, this is all I'm setting right now, okay? Up till now, if you remember, this was just printing me just, it was just printing me what? Mm -hmm. The class object reference, that's it. But now I can go and say, you see, this class is a class object. Because it's a class object, I can actually do say get class name now. Get class name is a name that I just defined right here with the set class name, right? So first I created a class object and I did a set class name and I, I pushed this value inside the class. And then when I'm looping around in the class array, it is able to print me the value with the get class name. Let me print this and let me show you how, how this works. You see class one. Uh, uh, number 22 here, okay. Okay, yeah. Null pointer exception because uh, for the other guys, for the other guys, it is null. Like for, for so here right now I have just, one class, okay? I don't have any other classes given inside that list. So which is why it is, it is throwing me this null pointer exception saying that uh, you cannot access the method called get class name for a null value. If, if, you, if you remember, let me just uh, show it to you again. If I take this down and if I run this, sorry. If I run this, you will see it prints me the object 
reference value and all the other values are null. But I was accessing the method called dot get class name. Now get class name makes sense for an active object of class, but it doesn't make sense for a null value of the, of the object, which is why it was giving me a null pointer exception. It makes sense. So somehow we have to avoid that. How can I avoid that? Multiple ways, but I'm, I'm using one option here. I'll do a try catch block, try catch block. Um, catch, catch. And the catch I say null, null pointer exception dot class um, n. Okay. Okay. So basically, what I'm trying to say here is in this try catch block, if any exception comes here in the try block, and if that exception is a null pointer exception, then just print this out, okay? Print empty class, um, empty, not empty class, but I should say, uh, empty, empty slot, empty slot. Yeah. Empty slot, empty class slot. Yeah. So, you know, I told you there are going to be five slots to create five classes. If I ever get a null pointer exception during this, it means there are empty slots for classes, which are not yet filled right now. We are just dealing with only one class here not any, anything other than that. So meaning I can just quickly go and say, let me run this out now. And you see there is no more error. It just prints class one and there are four empty slots. So basically what, what it means that whenever that null pointer exception came, the instead of stopping the execution, it simply went to the scatch block and printed this value. If I'm not using this try catch block, my execution would have been stopped exactly how I showed you earlier. But because there's a try catch block now, my execution didn't stop and uh, I was able to print this, which makes sense. So you understand that I have created a class. Um, let me take this up. So think about it. I have just created a class. This class doesn't have students yet. All right. So let me do one thing. Let me create multiple classes. Can I do it? Oh yeah, I can do it. I can create class like class one, class two. Now the class is class two. And I'm creating another class called class three, right? I've created three different classes. Good. Once I added the three different, once I got the three different classes, none of the class has any student. Every one of them is having a list of student array, but I have not added any of them. That's cool. That's cool. So let's go and see uh, this guy here in the school project. Okay. So I have three classes now, and let me add all of them. How do I add all of them? Very simple. I can call this method called send marks dot add class two and add class three, correct? I added three classes, that's it, because I have three classes created now. I'm able to add three classes to the school, correct? Let's go and run this. Um, okay, there is some problem. I think you need to change the name in the other files so that to what class two and class three. If you go back to the other file. Mm, which other file? The class file? Where, the class file, sorry, yes. Okay. Uh, no, 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 nothing, nothing to do with that. 
I'm setting the class name here. That's okay, I have to debug and figure out what's going on. So it is send marks as school name. Why it is doing this? It should not. So there is a problem with my add class method. I have to figure this out, hold on. So basically, um, class is having this method, sorry. School is having a method called add class, right? Uh, it broke. If it is null, then it will set it there. It should break. Why it didn't do it? Let's see. Let's see why it didn't do it. So my motive is it in in the in the five slot list. It will add class one, class two, and class three, and the other two will be empty. That's what my plan was. But it looks like it didn't work. Let's see why it didn't work. So I came here. So I'm going to add in add class, right? So let's go and add it. Broke out of it. Good. There's a next class. So get inside. It is null. The first first guy is not null. First guy is not null. So it must get out. Second guy is null. It must set it and break. So now I should have, yeah, that's what. It is good. You see, I added the class one and then class two object. All right. Let's go ahead. Go here again, class three. Let's see. First one is not null. Second is not null. Third is null. It should set. It went in and done. So you see, and then this is a list of classes. So, okay. Yeah, it's perfectly fine. Look, it has three different class objects. Class one, class two, class three, and other two are null, correct? So if that is the case, then it should work. Uh, so I'm checking this uh, first length here, okay? List of class. It'll print me the class name. Class three got printed. Why three got printed? This is a list of class. Okay, let's see what happens next. For loop again. When you go back, you see that there are four printed already now. I'm sorry? When you go back to the other, uh, the classes that are printed, there are four of them now, instead of three. No, I'm not getting you, I'm not getting you. The last, uh, when you go back to the list of class that have been printed, when you mm -hmm. check it, you see it's four instead of three. No, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I have to, I have to yeah. scroll down. Yeah, so I, I should have, okay, one minute. Okay, let me do a let me do a watch on this. So, yeah, you see, this is a list of class, and if I'm looking at the index number zero, and then if I do a get class name, yeah, uh, dot get class name, it's in class three. Okay. Is, it might be silly, but is it because i is equal to three in the second loop? And does it not like reset to zero maybe at the second loop and it still thinks it's three? But I, I have the i equals to zero, right? Oh, yeah. It's weird. To, yeah, it's weird. Um, why does it take class three? And then class one, it is saying null. Class two, it is saying null. Class three, null. That's the, that's the null pointer. Yeah, but why? 
that is weird, very, very weird. Ah, uh, yeah, come on. Look, at, That's what I meant to say. look, 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 look here. I should have said this. I made all class one and for all the objects. That's why. Is that what you meant to say? Yeah, I meant, I meant to say when you were creating the classes that um, you forgot to change the set class name to class two. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, okay my sorry. I, I but understand. I directed you to the wrong class. I'm so okay, sorry. no problem, no problem. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is where it is, you see? Class two, class three. The object name should be different, right? No, no, now they should be perfectly fine. You see that? Class one, class two, class three, empty class slots. Now you exactly know if you are a student manager, if you are a school manager, you can know, okay, I have class one and class two, that's fine. And then I have empty class slot for another two classes to be created. Perfectly fine, okay? Now let's try to create, let, let's try to make it more uh, better by adding the student information, right? I won't really make it more um, than what it is now. I mean, simple one, so string, private, private uh, string, string, student name, student name, uh, equals now, and then uh, I go and say private uh, string, sorry, private, um, student list, student, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is the list of students, right? So I don't need anything else uh, because my list of students is getting created in the class already. So I don't need anything else. I just need a name and that's it. I just want to have a get name and set name, right? I just need a get name and a set name here. Um, so just do a get a setter. Source, get a setter. Generate. So you see, I have a get name, set name, and that's pretty much about it. Meaning I can go ahead and do this, right? I can just go to my school project. Let me create students and add the students into different, different classes, right? And then simply make the whole thing work now. So I'm just going to say, I'm going to say student. I'm going to right now just make like two students for each and every class. Student, let's name Sana equals new student, right? Sana dot set name, Sana, right? And similarly, let's go and do it for a few of them. So they say Ronan, Ronan, and Nikki, Okay, right. Uh, let's go and create a few more. So I go Ben Ben Ben. I go um, I go virtually. Okay, so firstly, let's try to look at the problem one more time. The main problem that I was talking to you about. You didn't change the virtually. Yeah, I will, I will, yeah. 
this is just the string. So, all right. So now let me try to look at the same problem, the problem that I was descri describing something back. Let me just try to look into it again, just by, all right. So here's the deal. You are looking at students. What I did, I created a student entity and I made multiple students. No problem, I can do that. Then I made class because class is another entity. And then I made another entity called school. So uh, bottom to top approach. I'm creating student class to make multiple students, adding them into a class in a list of student array, adding multiple classes into a school, a bottom to top approach. By this, I am now able to perfectly make it work, right? Perfectly, I know that, you know, I, I'm able to complete the story from a Java perspective, right? So let me complete my, this, this, this program now. So I have this few, few guys here. I'm going to, I'm going to put them into some of the, some of the classes. Let's see. So class, class one, class one dot set. Sorry, where's the method? There's a method, right? Uh, do I have the method? Sorry, add student and get student. Correct? Yeah, good. So meaning, um, see, class one, right? Dot add student. Who is student? Let's add Ben, all right? Class one dot add student. And let's name Vaishali. You guys are in two cl same class, all right? And then let's let me add another person here, class two. Class two dot add, I'll add maybe uh, Nikki. Nikki and I'll add, okay, Nikki is alone there. And then I have class three dot add. Add and I have run and I have those three dot add. I have uh, what's the name? Sana. Did I cover everybody? I think I did. Uh, ben, okay, I'll, I'll put Nikki and Mother together. So class two dot add student dot two. Right? I think I covered everyone. One, two, three, four, five, six. Everybody got two to two each. Good. Fine. Everybody got them. Now with this, now I can say that I have a class. Each and every class is having two students, right? Now in the same for loop that I am working with, this for loop is, running or looping through the classes, multiple classes. At the same time, when I'm looping through multiple classes, instead of getting just the class name, I can also get few more things. For example, let me, let me put it like this. So class name, it'll print me like this, you see, class name, List class I get class name, right? That, that's my class name. It'll bring my class name. Good. Next is number of students. How can I get number of student guys? Guys, very simple. Look at it. I'll say sys out. Uh, number of students. Number of students. Students. How do I do that? You see, instead of saying get class name, I do dot get students. Student is an array, right? If I, so if I say dot, um, 
Wait. Yeah, that won't be working, right? Because this guy gets student. It will just get me back the array, just the array. And in the array, I may have, I may have, because the, in the, in the array will actually contain both the null value and the actual value. But uh, this guy is not going to give me, yeah, this will always give me the constant value. So I have to think of something else. I have to, I have to, I have to, I have to create another method, guys, or not. I'll create a method in, in, uh, in, in, the, in the class. In the class, I will create another method. I want to know how many students are there in my class. How can I do that? I can do that using uh, a method called public int um, get student count, right? Get student count. Now, how can I do that? I can do that by simply looping around. So for, I'll actually use the same loop, the same loop here, and then, and then I'll do if, okay, I'll use a, um, Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. So I'll do this. If this equals to null, it means that I have reached, I have, I have, I have, I've come across all my students. So meaning if there are, if there's this is the array, right? In the array, if I have two students, actual students, then you know what will happen. And there are 10, 10, 10 students, right? So only two of them are there. So basically this will be a student object and this will be a student object and rest of them will be all null, right? So meaning as soon as I hit null, if I break out of this loop, right? Then the value of I should tell me what is, how many students are there? Because in the, in the, I, when the I is zero, when the I is zero, the first, first student is I is zero. The second student is I is one, correct? So if I just return back I plus one, then that is the student count that is existing, correct? So let's, let's see this. So basically I will do simply, I will, I will just say it here. If it hits null, then return return, um, return, mm, I plus one, something like this. Else, so if, if that this loop doesn't satisfy at all, then just say, return zero, correct? Because if you're running this for the first time, if you're running this for the first time when none of the students are there, then obviously it should return zero, correct? So that's what it is. So meaning if I'm going back to the caller and if I say it here, dot get student count, then this should give me how many students are there, okay? So get class name and get student count, done. Now let's try to work with the actual students. Like I want to loop through the students. So how can I do it? I have to create, I should do something like this, right? I should say student list, it's a for loop within a for loop, you see? Obviously one, one loop is to loop through the student, and one loop is to loop through the classes. So obviously it's a for loop within a for loop. So student, 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 list student, right? Equals list of class I, 
dot get class name sorry get student get students all right how about that right once i have this then i can have another loop something similar to what i was having here i can say j int j equals zero j less than uh list student dot length dot length and uh, j plus plus j plus plus right this loop is going to loop through the students because at the end of the day i want to get each and every student under which class they are correct so now that i have this what do i do i go and say let's print them all so sys out okay let's print them out how do i print them i go and say list student i dot get get student name because this gets student name so is, is it i or j dot it's a j because this this loop is for i uh -huh. this is another loop which is for j so when you are printing out is it list of student i or j this is going to be j okay yeah and the list of student i is j less than list of student that is true that is true yes j less than student that is true yeah okay now i have a for loop within a for loop and this loop will tell me how many students are there so i'll just go and say student name student name student uh student name and then, then like this, right? Uh, add it here. So it will first print the class name, number of students, and then it will print the student name. I'll actually give some gap so that you know you can actually look into it in a very a nice way. Uh, all right. Okay. All right. So let's see and print this out. And uh, let's see how that looks like. Look at this now. Do you see? Class name, class one. Number of student is three. That's wrong, right? Uh, yeah, that's wrong. It's an I plus plus. I should have just returned I, and that should have that should be the case then. Hold on. Um, I just go and change this to my class. And this is not I plus one. Just return I. Just return I should do. Okay. And uh, let's run this again. Perfectly fine. And you can see it just prints me that student name, uh, all the student names I got. And uh, actually, I must I must also do something right. Like like you have you see this here. Uh, I'm wondering why it is not printing. Oh, okay, okay, I know what happened. Wait, wait, wait. I'm wondering that like like in the class, I'm getting empty class slot. I must also get empty class and empty student slot. Because here I'm just getting this guy, right? Only two of them. So how is that possible to achieve? So school project, this is the for loop. So list of student of this one, get student name, but the first one is fine. Second one is fine. Third one, I should get a null pointer exception. I should get null pointer exception. Let, let's see, um, I'll, I'll have to do some debugging to figure this out, why it is not complaining. It should complain, it should, it should throw me an exception, but it's not, okay. All right. So then I have list of classes. I'm getting the list of students now, and I'm looping around. Right, right. Here I have. You see, there are nulls. So I must be getting null pointer exception for these guys, and I'm not getting why. That's my question. So 
I, I think that that null pointer exception is coming over here and then just, oh yeah, that, that is what is happening. As soon as it is, ha it is hitting this null pointer, it is going here and then the loop is not continuing, right? Yeah, that's the reason. Okay, I know, what, I know what's happening. You know what, I have to create a null pointer here again. I have to create a try catch block here also. Uh, within this uh, loop, try catch, so that I can say that I have empty slots for students uh, exactly like this, right? Within the for loop. All right. And now, obviously, for the null pointer, it should throw me the null pointer exception, and this catch will catch it. And then I will print out empty student slot, empty student slot, student slot, right? And now that I have this, if I run this now, um, hold on. okay, if I run this now, yeah. Look at it, look at it. You see that? Student name, and then there are empty student slots for all eight. So you know that there are students where you can fill in. You see, you just created a small school management system in a matter of one and a half hour, more or less, right? Do you see, that this is how a class can be, this is how you should be looking at a problem. Am I, am I making sense? Whatever you, you saw me doing right now, is this understandable? Uh, for me, uh, I feel like uh, I have to go over the video again, um, just to mm -hmm. gather a better understanding. But uh, for now, I, I'm, I'm able to understand the logic, but um, I just no. need to go over the video. I, I need to know, where is your confusion? What is the um, confusion? It's not more so the confusion. It's just that um, the wow. amount, the amount of uh, coding that you have done um, in the space of time is kind of like thrown me off a little. Uh, but I think if I go over the video again, then I'll be able to kind of like um, understand it better. Okay, but I think, I think it's just you... lack of experience as well. Probably yeah, not, just not all used to yeah, Java yeah. that kind of detail. Yeah. Exactly. Like yeah. So, like the, the order in which this was all created as well, I guess. Yeah. So, it's like retracing the different steps mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to get to the solution. That's my. Um, that's what I would take away. Okay. What about yeah, for? Feel, yeah. Go on. Yeah, because I, I feel that there are quite a lot of dependencies across separate uh, several classes, mm -hmm. which is made it a bit. I wouldn't say confused, confused, like no, guys, slightly, have, slightly confused, but it, it's, look, guys, I, you have, you, you have, I mean, what did I do? I mean, by looking, don't, don't go by the line, number of lines of I have coded, right? That, that comes with experience. But if, if you look at it from the eagle eye point, right? What, what, what did I say? I said, I have a school, school is an entity, all right? I have another entity called class because these are the player of my game, all right? The so school, class, and student. If you if you understand this this thing from a different angle, right? So obviously it's quite common sense that a class will have multiple students. A class will have can store multiple students, and in a school I can have multiple classes, right? So meaning I need some kind of an entity, some kind of an entity that can store classes, and some kind of an entity that can store student. For student. I don't need any any entity to store something else. Maybe I can I can have a few attribute there like name, location, and then maybe gender, and then uh, maybe uh, some extracurricular activities. Those are going to be the attribute for a student. But for class, a class can store multiple students. A student school can store multiple class. And the best way to store multiple same entity inside one location so that I can I can I can work with them easily 
is obviously an array. So array is my purpose preference to go over it. So I created a class for student, sorry, student and a class for class, another class for school. And I have predefined that the school will have five, can, can have maximum five classes and class can have maximum 10 students. And I have predefined that when I was running, writing the program, if you go to each and every class, you will see that, okay? Once I'm done with that, next motive is what? Next motive is create a student and add it to the list. How do you create a student? How do you create a student? You can create a student by creating an object of student, exactly like I showed you. So student, student, Ronan equals new student right and you created a student you, when, when you create a student this ronan you have to add this guy this guy into one of the indexes of the array and that's it i did i i i used a method i created a method in the class in the class where i said add student it makes sense it makes sense to have this method here because the class can obviously add a student to the class. So add a student, this, this, this method will accept a student object. Otherwise, how will it add it to the, to the array? So it will accept the student object and then simply add it into the list of the, the, the array. And then, yeah, gone, gone, gone. When, when you say you want to create an instance of the uh, student, Hmm. Right. Um, do do you have to actually declare? So here, I haven't seen that you've declared the actual um, uh, the uh, the property for student. And where would you declare that? Is that in class or is that in school? The the property of the student is in the class right now. You can see. Okay. Um, so so when you create the new instance, you actually so in this new class page for student. Um, you would you would create the new instance, but you're calling it from the class page. Is that correct? I didn't call it from the class page. I called it from the school project page. School project page is basically the class. Let me. School project page is basically the class, which is basically playing the whole drama, right? So this is my school project page, which is the main method school project, school project page, or class so is the main class, is the main class from where my program is starting. In this class, I'm actually creating the object of student because this is the class which is controlling all of these entities in one place. Is it making sense? Um, well, uh, so, yeah. Okay. okay, continue. Now no, no, carry on, if you. Okay. Um, uh, the student class, nothing. What we didn't create anything in the student class, right? We created a property. No, we created, we created a property. In the student class, not the. Yes, we uh, did. Yeah, we did. We did here. See, private string name student. Okay, just a name. Okay. And okay. and and a getter and setter, which will just set the student name and get the student name. That's it. That's it. Okay. Can can you so using that diagram that you was using, mm -hmm. so in what in what um in what package did you create the uh the properties? Sorry, because I'm trying to understand this. So in what package? So this is test score. Nothing right? to do with the package. The package, the, the, the main package, okay. D don't don't get confused with the package. Pa a package is just a folder. It's just a yeah, directory. Of so yeah, this so directory I am holding. This 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 is this this is the whole. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So in what class did you create the properties that you're now calling? So so basically, th there's the reference variable which is the uh, the student name, right? And then you've got the instance variable. 
Mm-hmm. Go on, go on, yeah, yeah. So, so that instance variable, where are you mm-hmm. calling it from? What is it from class? Is it from school? Is it school project? Is you mentioned it's, school, it's school project? project. Right? Yeah, it's school project. You see, okay. In, the school project is the main project, the main main class where mm-hmm. I am playing the whole drama. Okay, 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 okay. I'm adding all the students over here. I'm, I'm not adding. I'm creating the students over here. Yeah. Okay, I understand that bit. Okay, so the- now once I created the students, okay, so n- n- now let me draw this and show it to you. So you see, I created a list of students, right? One. I will not say list of students, but I have, I'm creating like the six student instances, right? My plan is to add the students into multiple classes. Multiple classes for each classes. I have three classes. Each class will have two students each. So then I must be creating an instance of class one, an instance of class two, and an instance of class three. So I did. I created an instance of class one, named it as class one instance. Class one, class one, class two, and class three. I did that. Once I did that, that's my instances, my objects. Okay. Once I created the class objects, then I have the access to the method within the class. What is the method? Add student. I use the method called add student, add student to add a student into the class. The class is having an array called as list student. So in this, I'm, I'm passing another student. So I'm passing Sana, right? And then I'm passing Ronan, right? And passing so Sana and Rodan. And when I add it, when I'm passing these two, this method is built in such a way that this method can look into the pres- I mean, respective array, which is relevant to this class, and simply push these two guys inside them. This one and this one. It'll be pushed inside this array, right? Exactly the same thing is happening for this one and this one, class two and class three. Once I'm done with that, that's my class. This, this is my this, this is my three individual classes, right? So once I have the three individual classes created along with students, the next thing is what? Next thing is my school. Next thing is my school. And my school is having a method called as add class, add class. And this add class method can accept, can accept a class object. So meaning I can go and say class one, I can add class one. I can go ahead and do the same thing for add class two, add class two. And when I do that, what is happening? Each and every classes is getting added into the array, into the array that is storing classes. So each and every one of them is now, all these objects are now being added to these guys now, correct? That's the, that's how I built the whole story. And now that I run it from my school project class, now you understood that I first looked around the list of classes, and then I looked around in the list of students so that I can get to know that which student is under which class and which class is having how many students. Is this somehow making sense? Yeah, it's a lot clearer. Yeah. 
Okay. I need to know more if you are confident because guys, this, this part is very, very, very essential without really getting this uh, thing clear into your mind from now onwards, whenever I talk about a situation, okay, try to, I mean, deal with that from Java class perspective. Classes are nothing but a direct representation of, um, of, a, of, of a real world situation. What if I tell you this? I have a, uh, I don't know, did I, did I do this with you guys or not? I have a car, I have a car wash and my car wash is accepting multiple cars for washing the car, right? If I, this, this, this is the simple real life situation, right? You have a car washing company, every day multiple cars are coming and you are trying to, uh, you're trying to wash them, right? And when, when, when you're trying to wash them, there are different kinds of washes. It could be a soap wash or a wax wash or a water wash, right? So you have to create a solution using which you can uh, create a car washing center in which there are multiple different washing capabilities are present and then multiple cars are getting washed. This is your situation now, okay? How, how, how will you deal with this? I showed you one situation. How will you deal with this? Right? Okay, the cars, uh, car wash, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. uh, Then the different types available. So outside, inside, outside and, you know, and in. Uh, so that's for the uh, class car wash. And then you could create a class called car, mm -hmm. uh, which would just contain car or car name. Mm -hmm. Then add, and, and then going back to the car wash class, you would add the car have to have a method to add the car that's mm -hmm. going to be washed. Mm -hmm. mm. I don't know what else. Okay, you're, you're quite doing okay. Uh, what about uh, the wash types? So a car oh. can come and try to choose a soap wash or a water wash or a wax wash. How, how, can, you, how can you plan to do that? Mm. So when you have the car wash class, you would have the different types. Uh, so you'd have string car wash option one, like soap wash. Uh, then- How a car will how? choose an option. The question is right. how a car will choose an option. So, so get, set and get, no? set, using like getters and setters to then determine how they would. That's, okay. that's the bit that I'm, I'm sure on actually. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, you're, you're quite close there. You're quite close there. So basically I'm trying, to, I'm trying to say that whatever the problems that you can think from now onwards, you should try to think from a Java perspective, Java class perspective. I'm not, I'm not hearing from ladies here, Vaishali and Nikki, what do you think? Um, for me, yeah, it's it's a lot clearer than when I started the class, but I just need a bit of practice on it. Um, mm -hmm. Just get good, just getting used to it. But um, it's 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 made it like it's put it into practice a lot more. Whereas before, it's kind of theory. Now I can kind of look at it using the real world examples, and it's making a lot more sense. Kind of uh, breaking it down and looking at it like low level first, and then working your way up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good. Vishali, what about you? Yeah, I'm the same. I understand mm -hmm. the logic. It's more clear, but I think I really need more practice. Hmm. 
um, you know, looking into the real world scenarios and breaking them down. So guys, the best thing that can that you can do to make it make it work is is create a scenario on your mind. Create a scenario, whatever you see in your in your real life. Okay, whatever, right? I, I don't know. Think about a bus depot, um, or uh, think about like um, maybe a journey between uh, two different points, right? Uh, a bus is going from point A to point B, right? Try to think about each and every one of them from a Java class perspective. How can you do that? How can you achieve a story like this? Like, you know, anything, anything that, 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 that is uh, making sense to you. Maybe you have your restaurant owner and you have multiple dishes to serve, right? And then customers are coming and they're putting in orders and then you are serving them, right? That's the story, right? You see, I'm just, just thinking about it, thinking out loud, you know? So just just to think something similar, and then try to try to create a class diagram. Okay, it's, it's always always very much efficient that if you, if you create a class diagram. So when I say class diagram, it's it's something similar. First and foremost, you understand who are the player of your story, right? So maybe I'm talking about the car wash situation. So car wash. Okay, so I'm talking about car wash is a company. Uh, and then you have cars, who are, who's another player. Uh, I, I'll put the car on the right-hand side, actually. And then there's another, another, another entity here as well, that is car wash type. You can even do that. Probably you're thinking that car wash type is just a, just, just a type. Can't I have it within the car wash class? You may, but you can also take it in a different level and make it a class separately. By doing so, things would be even more easily you know, achieved. Uh, for example, you can say car wash type, and uh, you can see, you can, you can say that this, 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 this three are my entity of, my, of this game, all right? So car wash, car wash type, and car. So you can create three different classes, class one, class two, class three. And then first and foremost, figure it out. What attributes do you want to give in the story? A car probably may have the attributes like brand, brand name, brand model, right? In this situation, do you really need to uh, know uh, what is the stop speed of the car? No, right? Car brand and model is more than enough, right? Car wash type, okay? In the car wash type, maybe just one uh, array, okay? Maybe an array, uh, string array, string array, string array, right? And uh, name this as wash types, okay? And uh, maybe you are supporting only uh, three of them as of now. So new, new string uh, three, right? New string three, and uh, this guy is uh, just that, right? Car wash types, new string three, and then you in this in this in this type method, you can have a, in in this type class, you can have a method called add types. Add types is a property, okay? This car may not have any property. You don't really need to start the car or stop the car. You don't need to do that, right? Maybe, maybe the car can have a property like pay. Pay, right? Pay can be a property for this car. So the car may go ahead and pay a particular amount. So you can say double. Right, and then you, you pay the money, whatever the amount is, right? You see, I'm just trying to create a, just first, first think in front of the system and just draw a class or multiple classes for your story and try to say what makes sense to, to 
fill in as a property and the attribute, right? So for car, pay is okay. Starting car, stopping car, accelerating car doesn't make sense in this case. So we won't even be using it, right? In the car wash, all right, car wash will have few property, right? Meaning um, a car wash, is, this car was designed in such a way that it can store, it can, it can push 10 cars in a row at the max. You know, the, the auto, auto wash property that, that I mean, auto washing uh, mechanism that we have in, 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 uh, in, in the country, right? Something like that, but it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a whole queue, right? All the 10 cars can get washed together, something like that, right? So then you have, um, you have say a car array. Okay, list cars. So at, at any given point, uh, or car queue, car queue, okay, equals equals new car of 10. At any given point, you can store 10 cars here, right? And then you, you create a car and you add them to the queue, okay? And then a car, okay, sorry, um, here, there has to be another another method. Uh, choose type. Choose wash type. Wash type. It's a method, right? This method should have an object, okay? Called car wash type. Uh, I'm just saying CWT, car wash type, and then you pass the object of CWT. CWT, right? And then this will basically select a value randomly, which will be a wash type for the car. Randomly. Out of three types, it can choose anything randomly. Okay, or maybe you can just say uh, CWT and then uh, you can just say dot get of an index maybe second guy or third guy, whatever it is, right? That's, that's going to be a choose wash type, right? And then here you can basically have a method called start, start wash, start wash. And the start wash method or the property uh, when you are passing the car and the card is already having the access to the CWT. So depending on the CWT, you will be printing whether it is a, a soap wash or a, a wax wash or a, a you know plain wash, right? You see, I just created a simple diagram to figure out what kind of properties I may require right now. What is there coming into my mind? The attributes, the properties, and everything. Once I have it here completely, then you will start coding. Create three different entities and start coding each and every one of them individually. And then create one single class, which is going to be your controller that will play the whole story for you. So this, this is your main class then, right? That's your main class where you basically create car type and then, I mean, car objects and then car wash type objects and then car wash object and then put them all together and then make the story. That's pretty much about it. Is it getting clearer now? Yeah, it's very clear now, but uh, can you just do a quick recap um, with the students, school and this thing, leaving only the four classes on the console. You have about seven classes. Just to do a quick recap. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> just the the uh, just leave the school projects, the school Java class Java, and let's close the rest so that we can just follow. Okay. So I did a bottom up approach. I first understood that um, there are three entities in this game. 
Number one was uh, school. Number two was classes. Um, classes. And number three was students. Each and every student, each and every class will have multiple students. That was my um, situation. So, student, sorry, school, class, class, class A, so class B, and student. One. Sorry. Yeah, go on. I don't mean the logical. I mean using the Eclipse, what you wrote in Eclipse. Oh, okay. My bad. My no, bad. just right. use the four, just leave the four uh, classes on so that you can just go through it. Just a quick recap of what you Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. All right. Good, good. No problem at all. So let me go back to the student class first. In the student class, I just have a simple class, which is I know that I need to add in the student information. So I have a private string student name, which is just going to just a variable that can store the student name. And I have a getter method and a setter method to set the value and get the value, number one. Next, I have a class class, which is having two properties. Number one is class name. It will just hold the class name. And then an array of students. Here I'm hard coding that the student cannot be, the, the number of students cannot be more than 10. That's the hard coding of the uh, array I'm doing. I'm, I'm creating a size of the array, which is 10 predefined, okay? Once I have that there, I have created- uh, So with the number of uh, students in the class, Vivek, um, can that change from class to class? So hey, obviously. Okay, you with this with this yeah. approach, it will not because I'm using uh -huh. array here. Array it's cannot constant. array cannot increase the size of it itself on, on but its if own. We, okay. But if we use array list, then we could do yes. it, right? Yes, very good. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. If cool. you Thank use you. the array list, then you can do that. Yes. Right. Um, but anyways, so I have these two guys there, and then I've created a get a setter for the class name property attribute. And then I have three different properties here, uh, add student, get student count, and get student list, all right? So add student method is doing nothing, but simply checking out the, the student list length. I mean, it's just looping around the student list, all right? The motive is just simply add in student inside this list, inside this array. So just looping around this list, and then I'm checking if it is not, if it's null, if the value is null, only then add the student inside one of its index. So obviously you understand that you will start from the left-hand side of the array, and it will, it will start occupying each and every boxes from left to right. Right when you loop around, correct? When you loop around, you just go one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. So you, you come here, you see that this is null for the first time and you set the student here. That's to you, right? And then when you again, when you again call the same method called as student, you look at the first guy, it is not null. So you won't do anything with that. You will go to the next index and you will see null here. So you add a student here, right? And then as soon as you hit, and then as soon as you add it, I'm breaking out. I'm breaking out of the loop so that I don't add the same object into all the empty boxes. As soon as I add one, I'm breaking out, okay? So that's that. So by, by doing this, by, by creating this method now, I'm making sure that every time I call this method, one of the value, one of the index of this array will be filled. That's it. Next, I have a method called get student count. This is simple. I'm trying to understand how many students are there in that particular class. So I'm just looping around that entire list of student 
right? And I'm checking if any of the index, so for example, if there are two students, or if there are three students, for example, right? If there are three students here, okay? And rest of them are all null, right? Null. All, all seven of them are null, right? So basically I loop around this loop is simply looping around, checking first index, is it null? No, it's not. Second index, is it null? No, it's not. Third index, is it null? No, it's not. Fourth index, is it null? Yes. As soon as it says yes, it's null. So which means that I have one to three students here. Simple, simple logic. As soon as I know the three students here, I'm returning that value. Return I, simple. That's how I know there are three students in my class. Next, I'm sending, I have a method called get students, which is basically sending with this entire list of students with null and without null, whatever. Why, why it is, why, why do I need, why do I care? Why do I care to, uh, why do I care to uh, process the whole list or, or the whole array instead of just picking up these three guys and sending it back? I care because I want to make sure, or I want to show it to my user that how many empty places are there. So which is why I have used that try catch block, which I showed you there. As soon as null hits, I can say that, yeah, there is an empty slot for me now. That's the reason why I'm keeping, you know, I'm, I'm sending the whole array back to the caller, correct? So the same logic, the exact same logic I have added, I've added into the uh, class situation. Right, so where is my class? My class is, sorry, not class, but school, right? Exact same situation. So I say, set school name, get school name, simple, get, et cetera, for this attribute. And then I have a list of class, right? And then what do I do? I say, add class and get class again. Add class and get class, I mean, from the class perspective, I don't really care to know how many classes are there, you know? I don't need to know. I just need to know uh, how many students are there, which is why I have added that method called get student count. I don't need a method called add, add class count or get class count, I don't need that, okay? So I have the same logic here again for, the, for sending the whole list of classes because I want to know how many empty slots are there? How many classes I can create more? Which is why I am sending this list. And then if I go back to the school project, which is the whole controller of this whole uh, situation. Um, let me clear the drawing. Okay, what I'm doing, um, as I said, I'm doing a bottom-up approach. So firstly, I'm creating my students. I've created six students here. Okay, they have nothing more than just a name and nothing more than that, all right? Next, I create three classes, class one, class two, and class three. And then I'm using the attribute, I'm, I'm trying to put the value inside my attribute called name for the class. So I'm using the method called set class name, all right? So I did that. Once I'm done with that, I'm using the method called add student. So I'm adding Ben and Vaishali for class one class two and class three, different students. I've created three different classes, class one, class two, class three. Now this is my class, my classes are ready. Now I need to add these classes inside a school, correct? These classes are, 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 are of no use until unless you put them in, into a school. So I am putting them into a school now, right? So I, I give a name to the school. Send Mars Junior and so on and so forth, right? And then I call the method called add class. Class one, class two, class three, I added all of them. Once I'm done with that, then I am getting the number of classes or the list of classes, get classes. Once I'm done with that, I'm looping around with the for loop, okay? So int of i, i list class dot length, and then I'm just saying, List class I, get class name, 
get student count, correct? It is going to give me the student count because um, I have a method inside each and every class object to get the student count. So I'm getting the student count. No problem with that, number of students. And then I also have a method called get students, which is returning back a list of students. You see, it's very easy to understand what a method is actually giving back to me. If you hover your mouse on the method like this, you see the first word will tell you that, int. So this get student count is returning back with you with the int value. Get list count, get students count, get students method is giving coming back to you with a student array. You see that? It's clearly shown. Uh, for example, let me think of a method like add class to the method, right? It's void. It's not returning anything to you, right? So you easily know by just hovering your mouse, you easily know what is that method is returning back. So now I, I have got my class name, I've got my student count, now I'm, I got the list of students. Once I got the list of students, if I want to print the values, I have to loop around, there is no other way. So I'm looping around the list of students. Okay, and you see it is a J loop. The, I mean, the counter of this loop is J, the counter of this loop is I. It's a, it's a, it's a nested loop, right? A for loop and a for loop. So within this for loop, I have a try cast block. In the try cast block, I'm saying that, um, okay, just get me the student name. For, because each and every each and every of this instant is basically a student. So get me the student name. And that's how I've got this getting the student name. And obviously when it hits null, meaning when it hits null over here, so maybe there are three students. So it gave me student one, student two, student three, it hit null, right? When it hit null, I am putting them into the try catch block and I am basically intercepting that null pointer exception. So I'm, I mean, I'm waiting that as soon as the null pointer exception comes in, I would print out the value in the student slot. That means I have a student here to be filled in, right? Simple stuff. Is this, uh, is this okay for a recap? You're much clearer for me. Yeah, thanks so much for that. That was, that was super. Uh, yeah, really helpful. helped. Really helped. Very yeah. good. It's making a lot of sense now. Thanks. Very, very good. Awesome. I thought I'll cover up a lot of things, but um, you know, this this um, initial days, things will be a little bit you know off the grid. Uh, probably we will not be able to exactly follow our schedule, and but that's okay. These these different uh, topics are so crucial. I don't want to rush through any of it. You know, uh, I want to make it slow so that you guys understand it, right? So how to create a class object. I think this part is very much clear to you by now. Learn about what is Selenium and these things. Let me take it up next week about Selenium configuration, what is Selenium and so on and so forth because this classes and objects are very, very important. I will be enabling you with week number three now. Um, and then you guys can start looking at week number three content there are so many things to cover, but I, I, I really, really want to um, let you guys know that it's, it's, it's highly, highly important that you should be able to convert a story into class, create a class diagram, think about a story, anything that I was talking about regarding the car wash or something else, right? Try to convert that to the class. It is very, very important, okay? Because this is going to be your bread and butter. Every day you would be creating hundreds of classes and you should, you cannot create a class for something that doesn't make sense. You understand? So it is very important that you, you know when to create a class and when not to, right? So that, that, that experience will slowly come to you, uh, but you got to, you know, practice. You got to practice and you got to build up your story and then just try to quit, create multiple such situations and then come back to me with questions and I'm happy to help. Okay. 
So yeah, that's that, that's what that's where I want to end up today, and um, I hope uh, you guys uh, will have fun learning week number three. Um, obviously, um, I'm going to. Um, I don't know. I'm thinking. What do I do? Should I, should I give you guys a week off for week number two, and um, I will enable week number three once you complete week number two next weekend. Uh, or you want me to enable week number three now? Uh, you have to let me know that. What, what do you think is the, is the right thing to do now? Yeah, maybe you should just upload this uh, class and we use this week to just uh, go through it one more time. And uh, maybe after the weekend, you can enable the week three. That's my own opinion. Anyway. Okay, okay. I'll enable the week three uh, anyways. And you please go through the class and then practice, practice. Okay, a lot of practice needed. I'm going to do one thing. This um, project that I have here, I'm going to go to my system explorer and I'm going to get this to compressed and I'm going to upload this to the Slack, all right? Just again, I'm putting this in my Slack right now. Okay. So let's say, Okay, so it's, it's, it's my other screen, so. Um, yeah, I've sent this to you. Um, it's a zip folder, download it, and then you can play with that, okay? That's number one, and um, I will upload the video, okay? As soon as it's processed by Zoom, I'll upload the video. I will also enable you with week number three. And then let's meet back next week, uh, same time, and continue from here on. Is that is that okay, guys? Sure. Thanks so much. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. All right, guys. Have a great uh, weekend, and uh, see you next week. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.